Thank you also from my side <clears throat> very much for the invitation and for this um, important moment to um, discuss with both committees. Um, uh, I just came back from Tunisia where uh, a week ago I visited the Bardo Museum and you can imagine how big the shock was when I flew back and I heard that this attack happened uh, not only on the museum but on the values of culture and democracy in the whole Maghreb. Uh, I think we, we, we are meeting here at an urgent moment. And this sense of urgency influences, influenced a little bit my contribution. I will not only repeat the main recommendations of the preparatory action, you will get the documents, but I will try to get uh, one step further and to discuss or to propose some items for discussion. Uh, first of all, the main um, outcome of the uh, preparatory action was evidence. We have sound evidence now that there's a huge potential for culture as part of European external relations, beyond the branding of, of, of nations. It's, it's really um, a potential for European action. Secondly, there is surprising demand on all sides, both within the European Union, but also with many member states who uh, have understood that there is something very interesting to embark with Europe as a whole on cultural relations. Thirdly, what Sana Ustati mentioned, there is a broad basic agreement. And we, when we talk today about cultural diplomacy, it's a new notion of cultural diplomacy. It's based on a listening mode. It's based on a sense of mutuality. It's based on a sense of respect and equality. It's cooperation and co-creation. And fourth, let's not forget we are acting at this moment in an environment of strong competition good competition and less good competition. Uh, and I think Europe has to get its act together. The, most of the actors in the, uh, in the uh, preparatory action interviewed stressed that in the end it will be a win-win situation for both the European institutions and the member states. And I think this is the important novelty. It's not one against the other, it's really a mutual enrichment, it's a win-win situation, not to forget the civil society, which is very much stressing the necessity of having some transnational cultural components in European external relations. There is also a win-win in terms of uh, the economy of implementing it, because we are talking about pooling of resources. There are so many strong institutes in the remit of the nation states, the member states of the European Union, there is a willingness to look into possibilities to pool and then to also to economize or to enhance the impact of what we are doing. And I think this is what we need. Uh, and uh, uh, the key word, I think, uh, when we talk about future strategic op options is complementarity. We have to see where we can complement each other. There's a big need of next steps policy-oriented steps, and this will be one of my message to, uh, messages to, to the both committees. We need certainly a new political advancement of uh, strategic framing and action. People in the field are waiting now after so many years of very interesting uh, preparatory action. They are waiting for true action. A lot has been achieved already. I would like to mention a few um, uh, uh, interesting activities which are going on and some people uh, don't have, most people don't have the full overview. There's for example uh, a new uh, European Neighbourhood Culture Programme outpost in Kiev with a sustainable long-term uh, programme for capacity building in Kiev and, uh, and the neighbours. There is for example the idea of having a decentralised uh, culture programme in Tunisia managed by um, the delegation and partners. There is, for example, uh, a twinning scheme between Azerbaijan and the European uh, member states uh, to reform cultural policy making in this uh, country in transition, you may, you may say. There is, under Horizon 2020, a research going on on European science diplomacy and cultural diplomacy. And this is also a very important point, science diplomacy in terms also of, of cooperation, but also in terms of getting something out in, in a competitive situation to enhance our competitiveness. And uh, not to forget, and uh, I'm very pleased to hear that there's a new uh, vigor in DG DEFCO, culture and development has come back on the agenda. 
uh, Sana mentioned a few practical instruments which are in the mode of being prepared. One is the foreign policy instruments, the uh, inst instruments uh, contributing to peace and stability. I understand that they will be operational as from 2016, and that opens some possibilities. Um, there will be, um, I think, a feasibility study on EU film festivals uh, outside Europe in third countries. There will be a network of young creative entrepreneurs, and that was facilitated by the Culture Committee of the European Parliament. Thank you very much for that. There is a project called Crossroad for Cultures, which is implemented by UNIC, the network of national cultural institutes. Very important. And uh, I understand that there might be new ways of enhancing the service capacity of the institutions, both external action service and uh, uh, the DG education and culture and others. Policy instruments and policy formation is also promising. Uh, this autumn we will have a culture forum where one day will be devoted to culture and external relations. 800 cultural operators from all over Europe will be here and we of course certainly hope that also Mrs. Mogherini will attend this uh, forum. Um, and uh, where it may lead to, I don't know, um, a couple of years ago we had this communication on the, which led to the agenda for culture. Maybe that is a way to, uh, to explore. Maybe a resolution would also uh, do. What we need really is a strategic framework which is, which is solid and, and sound and bold. Where is action needed? I would like to mention five key areas, not to go too much into details. First and foremost, I think what we need is tangible action in the field of conflict and culture. How do we deal with conflicts around us in the neighborhood, east and south, but also in third countries? Secondly, the economic component, the creativity component, and the capacity building which is related to this question, including management and training. Third, um, I think, and this is dear to my heart, I think we should go beyond the easy ones. We should also try to prepare ourselves, get prepared for difficult situations. And I would like to mention Iran. Just imagine that the agreement uh, on the atomic question will be re resolved. Shouldn't we try to have a European laboratory for a couple of years there before the national actors are prepared to really build their investment in the, in the country? I think the Iranians, the young generation, are really waiting for uh, counterparts to go there and to listen and to, 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 to work together. Uh, fourth, civil society. Culture is a privileged means to support civic actors of change, peer-to-peer, people-to-people. And fifth, culture in development contexts. In order to achieve progress in, the, in those five areas, we need also some proof, managerial proof, that it can be done by pooling resources. Uh, the cultural institutes, um, they are, I think, ready and wait for possibilities to really cooperate without adding a new layer on uh, the administration and the bureaucracy. So it's about stimuli to pool resources uh, to enhance complementarity and to improve governance and leadership in such projects. We need to be creative. We need new formulas how small groups of cultural institutes and civil society actors can work together in a given country. Secondly, we need also new methods of pooling and finding new resources, combining resources, public-private partnerships, fundraising, corporate responsibility. There is a great interest of uh, European businesses too because they understand the necessity of cultural communication with their counterparts. So they might be ready if there is a sound initiative from the Europeans that they, might, that they, they could support initiatives in, in specific cases and countries. And third, I think uh, visibility of the European Union, mm -hmm. the visibility of Europe, and we definitely need to invest in some clever new, new ways of using modern technology for European public and cultural diplomacy. That needs some longer-term development. Last point, what could these two committees uh, do next to what is, uh, being, what, is pi what is in the pipeline of EAC, uh, External Action Service, uh, and uh, DEFCO and others. I think it's too 
basic pleas to you from, from a representative of civil society, European Cultural Foundation for a long time, Austrian uh, NGOs, etc. It's two things. Please help the institutions to uh, get a strategic framework right. We need some enhanced policy orientations in order to get it right, to get it balanced. Uh, which instruments you might use, I, it's not up to me, but there is experience that your initiative, in particular it was the Committee of Culture in the European Parliament, was extremely instrumental for the Commission and now also for the External Action Service. So please help in formulating in a democratic way uh, the framework for strategy development in this sensitive uh, case. And secondly, and this is, comes back to my core point, action, we not only need longer term and mid term sustainable planning and initiatives, that is utterly important, but we also need short term rap rapid uh, interaction on action funds and possibilities. Why not having a rapid culture intervention fund which would help those on the ground who do fantastic work, the virtual museum of Mosul, where they try to rebuild the heritage which is now being destroyed. The uh, School of Kiev, a biennial which will uh, bring together Russian and Ukrainian cultural operators for six months in Kiev. And I could give you many examples, but what is missing is small money to enhance those people to go forward and to empower them to fundraise in other circles as well. So, Policy orientation, long-term development, have your eye on it. Please make also possible a short-term rapid intervention fund which could be administered by a consortium after a tender you would, you would launch. Thank you very much for your attention.